Happy Friday, everybody. We're glad you're with us for today's Town Hall. I'm Kate Welsh, chauffeur. Something's going on. There we are. Hey, everybody, I'm Michael Wooten. We always like to start with the phone number that you can see on your screen so you can join the conversation. 849-2200 is the number to text us any questions or comments. And we've been hearing a lot over the past few days. So ahead for us on this Friday, we're going to be verifying claims about both presidential candidates that have been making the rounds online and also talk about what you need to know before you go to vote. Plus, we're doing a deep dive into today's COVID-19 numbers. We know it can be confusing. We want to make sure that you understand the information you're getting. And then later on at the end of the half hour, bees. Ooh. They can be pesky in the summer, I know, but we're going to explain why we all need them to survive the cold winter months. We'll take a look at some special work that is happening right here in western New York. But well, we are going to start tonight with Decision 2020 and answering more of your questions about the election. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while, right? Well, now we are just four days away from the big night as we've been counting down. Although you should not expect to hear a lot of winners announced on Tuesday. Remember, we have all of those absentee mail-in ballots. Plus, uh, that's the case not just here in New York State, but really in many parts around the country. Erie County's Democratic Board of Elections Commissioner Jeremy Zellner gave us a little insight today into what's going to happen on election night and beyond. Listen. We're going to have results on election night. We're going to have a lot of results, but we're going to have to wait to count the absentees for 13 days. We won't even begin. We've got our Canvas schedule on our website that lays out the process and the dates. Um, but we've got to wait to get the military ballots back in so we can count those. We've got to check to make sure no one voted in person and mailed their ballot into us and pull. We've got to pull their absentees. So that process takes a little while and our staff is not stopping working uh, on election night. They'll be working hard through the month of November. And we also asked Zellner about something a few viewers have notified us about possible incidents of voter intimidation at the polls. Some Western New Yorkers have been asked to pull out their IDs as they wait in line to vote. Early voting in New York is new to everyone, including our election inspectors. Um, what we have the ability to do now is scan voter ID cards, scan our fast passes, and scan licenses to pull up the information of the voter. So that makes it a lot quicker. And some of our inspectors may be asking for one of those three things, um, but not, not uh, demanding the license to vote. Um, because you don't need a license to vote. You don't need any inf information to vote, but it helps us move the line quicker if you have that stuff. Um, but voters should, if they don't have a license, they should feel comfortable uh, to vote and register to vote um, just as easy as everybody else. And so good to clear up that confusion because we have heard from a number of people. We've even had staff members who have gone to participate in early voting and they've been asked for their ID. And of course, New York State is not among those that requires you to have an ID in order to vote. And so hope everybody paid attention there. If you don't have your driver's license or if you just don't have one to begin with, you can still vote. Yeah, as long as you're registered. And that's something good to yep. know, because I think even people, if you voted a bunch of times, people now are a little like, wait, am I getting this right? Do I need one? Yeah. Do I not need one? Even one of my friends asked me, do I need my license to vote? And I said, no, you don't. Not in New York State. It's just a little different. You know, we're used to going into our local polling place and signing the book on a piece of paper yeah. and then voting. And it's just different with early voting. So For sure. um, we got this next question from a viewer named Sandy. This is what she asked us. If you can vote at any polling site, what happens if there is a local election outside where you live? In other words, what if you vote in the 27th district, but you don't live there? It is a great question, and there are processes in place to make sure that no matter where you go to vote, let's say in Erie County, you are going to get the right ballot. So you may have heard about something called an electronic poll book. So here's a look at one. These, these are at all 37 of the early voting sites in Erie County. Yeah, instead of election workers looking through those paper poll books, like what always happened on election day, these e-poll books have registration information for every voter in the county, not just people in that little precinct. So when you sign in, it knows your precinct, and then it's going to print out the ballot that is right for where you live. So good question. Um, we talked about that, Kate. I think um, Jeff Preval did a story about it about a year ago when they first started using those. Um, and it's a good reminder for people. For sure, because you don't know for sure. Again, when you're, we're all sort of learning as we go with some of yeah. these new things with, with voting. A lot of questions are so good, so yeah. thank you. We got another viewer question too. This one's from Donna. She said, I cannot stand in line 
long due to back problems. How can I find out if there are provisions for people who are physically compromised? So she's in Niagara County, but from what we've been told, there's no statewide rule. So it very well could vary from polling place to polling place because there are sometimes chairs for people. But here's what Zellner with Erie County told us today in terms of advice for Donna or anyone else. Go talk to the inspector uh, ahead of time that's that's running the site. We have not made special accommodations for seniors or people with disabilities other than making sure they can get in to vote. But that's why we have 37 sites across the county. If folks uh, cannot wait in line, they should head to a place that there is no wait. Um, we, we're seeing lots of different towns and lots of places in the city of Buffalo that are not experiencing wait times. And you can be either wait in line for an hour and a half or go to a site that's a five, 10 minute drive, vote and be home before the people behind you have even had a chance. Many people are also asking us about safety of voting in person. Of course, the mask is important, but we have a quick bit of information here from NBC News senior medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres. Wear a cloth face mask in public and stay six feet or about two arms length away from others. Take hand sanitizer. Make sure it has at least 60% alcohol. Use it after touching door handles, the voting booth, or anything else someone may have touched. And then take your own pen so you're not using ones that have been shared between strangers. Lastly, if you have or think you might have COVID or were recently exposed to coronavirus, please stay home. Thanks as always to Dr. John and now to our special series, Verify the Vote. Our fact checking teams looking into election specific issues. And we're gonna start with something that's been spreading around the internet about President Trump. Yeah, a Western New Yorker named Emily sent me this article. You can see the title right there. It says, President Trump suggested former Vice President Biden will be shot just weeks into the presidency if he wins. This claim is false. Yet it was still spread by groups like Project Lincoln, a group of Republicans against the president. Now we know it's false because of the president's own words. He has often called Joe Biden shot, referring to his mental acuity and saying that his VP pick Kamala Harris will replace him. And the president was not saying Biden will literally be shot. But here is what the president did say with the full context. Joe Biden. Kamala, do you like Kamala? Do you like her to be your first president? I don't know. If he gets elected three weeks into his presidency, they'll say, Kamala, are you ready? Let's go. That's why they're talking about the that's why they talk about the 25th Amendment, right? Three weeks. Three weeks in Joe shot. Let's go, Kamala, you ready? Most liberal person in the Senate. So again, the claim that the president said that Biden would be physically shot is false. And now to a false claim about the other presidential candidate. Yeah, you have probably seen this viral post. It has been all over my Facebook feed. It claims that Joe Biden would add a 3% increase to all property taxes. That will catch a lot of people's attention here because we have high property taxes compared to most of the country. But that is a lie, as we hear now from Jason Puckett with our Verify team. So there's this long chain message going viral. It says if you read Biden's tax plan, specifically pages 40 to 60, he quote, has a plan to tax you on your house at 3% of its value. This is above and beyond your property taxes you pay now. So let's verify. Does Joe Biden's economic plan include an additional property tax on homeowners? First, one reason this may be spreading now is the name of the poster, David Ramsey. Now, some posts have linked this claim to popular financial advisor Dave Ramsey, but they're not the same person. So now let's dig into the claim itself. Our main sources are Biden's published plans, analyses by two independent think tanks, and the National Conference of State Legislatures. So Biden's published tax plans look like this, about seven pages on their website. You can't look at pages 40 to 60, as the claim suggests, because they don't exist. Okay, but do his actual plans say anything about an increased property tax? No. Property taxes never mentioned in any of his plans, and analyses of Biden's proposed tax plan by the Tax Policy Center and Tax Foundation had no mention of property taxes either. The National Conference of State Legislatures shows that there's currently no property tax at the federal level, period. Property tax is currently decided by and paid to your state and local governments. So the president would have no power to change those taxes. That would take an act of Congress. Bottom line, this claim is false. 
If you've got other claims or questions for us to look into, send us an email. To verify, I'm Jason Puckett. I kind of have this new rule that just everything I see on Facebook right now from either side, I just kind of assume it's maybe not true and I just kind of keep scrolling looking for like Halloween pictures or something. I think that is a very <laughs> smart thing to do. Yes. The Verify team has been busy. For sure. Yeah.